Before our interview with Murdoch Mayor Craig Kavanaugh, I was scrolling through the City of Murdoch's Facebook page. Almost all of the 11 most recent posts at the time were informing people that the city was without water because of a broken water main. They were helping people get water if needed. To me, this represented the Murdoch City Council's position in issuing a conditional use permit to the Acid Troop Folk Assembly and the purposefulness of the AFA in moving to Murdoch. We did ask for second opinions. Um, so Don Wilcox went through that, you know, with, with other with other legal advisors and everybody gave pretty much the same advice that if we would have denied the permit, uh, we would have lost in court. It felt like we had no choice um, just because of legal aspects. And I don't know if that's what this group's intentions were when they came, knowing that we couldn't deny the permit. Um, it just felt like something was wrong and that we were attacking, you know, they came to a small town for a reason. The AFA's other two Hoffs are also in small towns, one in Brownsville, California, and the other in Linden, North Carolina. Asatru is a pre-Christian European religion intended for all who want to subscribe to that belief system. The Asatru Folk Assembly is a pre-Christian European religion, plus they hold a whites-only standard for their membership with the mission of preserving whiteness. The AFA needed the conditional use permit in Murdoch because they were planning on holding religious gatherings in this facility, which is located in a residential zone. When the City Council heard the AFA had bought the building, they held a public hearing and started weighing their options. Don Wilcox is the city's attorney. At the same time, this was an also a good time for me to get Don Wilcox at our November meeting and have him explain the legal, the legal ramifications if we didn't approve this permit. Um, I, I wanted more people, you know, we had 50 people here in October. We had, we had our November meeting. I was hoping more people would show up. We had three. This decision had nothing to do with the city's beliefs, uh, nothing to do with the council's beliefs. It was strictly legal advised. What do you say to people that are calling you and calling the town racist? First of all, I say they don't know who we are. Um, if they came to Murdoch and understood our community, uh, we have one of the best school districts in the world as far as I'm concerned. Um, we have many, you know, a lot of diversity in those schools. Uh, we have zero trouble, um, you know, so I, I, if people think that we're racist, they're wrong. You know, knowing the city of Murdoch the way I do, I don't think a small group moving into town can change anything. I think we're a pretty tight-knit community. Um, I think people stick together, and I think if we stand together, we can beat this group one way or another. Um, you know, like, like I said before, I don't think anybody in this community is going to welcome them with open arms, and I think they know that. Mayor Kavanaugh noted that granting the permit or not, the AFA owns the building. The Murdoch City Council tried to buy the church from the AFA, but Mayor Kavanaugh said the AFA refused their offer, saying the group would likely face this issue no matter where they went, so they thought they would handle it now. Let's say we deny the permit. Um, we go to court, we end up losing, which is what we were told was going to happen. This group's still in town. They just might have more money in their pocket. You know, we have other churches in town. How many restrictions can you draw? You know, you got to do it for both if you're doing it for one. You know, I can tell you that I have not had an attorney call me that said they'd be willing to take the case, you know. So I, that just tells me something right there because this, this news is out there and nobody's contacted me. Professor Raleigh Levine, a professor of law at the Mitchell Hamlin School of Law, said that the city's case would have been much stronger if they were consistent in only allowing residential uses in residential zones. But, like Mayor Kavanaugh mentioned, there are other churches in town. The city has a practicing Catholic church, also in a residential zone. If, for example, they had allowed other uh, churches or other religious entities or any other um, non-residential user um, the kind of permit that um, uh, this group wanted, um, they would have been on shakier ground to deny it to this church. The main issue, Mayor Kavanaugh said it time and again, is white supremacist religion or not, the Asatru Folk Assembly is protected under the First Amendment. So by saying this group can't use it as a church, becomes a violation of their, because they're a religious group, becomes a violation of their rights, is what I was told. So now let's talk about the First Amendment. I'm talking Civics 101. The point of the First Amendment uh, when it comes to speech and religion is essentially to keep the government from censoring views and beliefs with which it doesn't agree. And so um, we don't really need the First Amendment to protect 
um, Minnesota nice speech, um, that would fly anyway, right? What we need it for is um, our it's speech and um, viewpoints that are offensive to a lot of people and that um, otherwise would go unheard. Um, and so the, um, so the reason that we have a First Amendment in, in many ways is to allow for the airing of offensive and upsetting opinions and beliefs so that we as a society can evaluate their truth and evolve over time. If we're never exposed to things that discomfort us, that make us um, unhappy or upset, we never question our own assumptions and we don't move forward. There's also something called the fighting words doctrine. In 1942, the Supreme Court ruled that words which, by their very utterance, inflict injury or tend to incite an immediate breach of the peace, don't receive full protection under the First Amendment. On their website, the AFA follows something called the warrior principle, which says, We believe that our members should strive to be ready for the challenge to defend our folk, gods, and goddesses with both cunning and physical skill when needed. Are these fighting words? It is really difficult to prove that words on a website um, are uh, that aren't directed at a mob and that aren't likely to provoke immediate illegal action are going to fall within the definition of incitement. And so the call um, to be prepared to defend white people with physical skill when needed um, probably lacks the immediacy necessary to fall into the incitement category. The key here is that the speech needs to be directed at a specific individual for it to be deemed fighting words. The court has really moved away from the fighting words doctrine, um, especially the part that includes uh, words that cause emotional pain. The, the court has found time and again that racist speech is protected by the First Amendment. So it has consistently overturned fighting words convictions on a number of grounds, um, including that the speech was not an insulting epithet or slur directed at another person and or was not likely to provoke somebody to retaliate. Uh, with violence. There's a distinction between belief and thought and speech on the one hand and action on the other. And until um, speech or belief crosses the line into action, it's fully protected by the First Amendment, even if it is odious, even if it is offensive, even if it is traumatic. So I wondered, because odious, offensive, traumatic, harassing speech is protected, is it time to reassess the First Amendment? In many ways, although the entire Constitution was founded on a system of slavery and um, is um, indeed um, uh, reflective of a racist um, uh, society that was aimed at protecting the property rights of rich, white, uh, property-owning males. Um, the First Amendment is actually um, one provision of the Constitution that really, um, from the beginning, has been meant to protect the rights of minorities. And, um, and that should be, um, that continues to be a value, um, whether any of us at any time is in the majority or in the minority. We should all um, be grateful that when we are in the minority, that we will be able to speak our minds and um, convince other people of the value of what we have to say.